Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I'm gonna give you a glimpse inside my thought process the other day when I was sitting down to a sandwich. As I got the bread out, I thought to myself, hmm. Well guys, you don't have to go raid your local bakery to get some breadcrumbs. You can simply just ask them and they will probably give you a handful or two of the crumbs down there at the bottom of the bread tray. I wanna thank my local bakery as well. Those guys are awesome down there. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this. So I got those breadcrumbs and I brought them home and I mixed them with some resin for the ninth, 10th time. I've tried to do this for a while. This is the first time I've actually got it on video and we made this. We made a bread pen. Check this thing out. This is actually one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that I've ever made. And it means a lot to me as well because, yeah, it's kind of a stunt. I actually manage that local bakery down the street and bread has been my livelihood for the past 20 years. So this is very dear to me. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for this. I'm also gonna hold this up just as a little surprise. I also made a pin out of that. So if you wanna see how we did it, let's go. Well, to start this process, we need to make blanks to actually make pins from. So I'm taking some PVC pipe, this is three quarters of an inch in diameter, and I'm CA gluing them to plywood bases really quickly, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping my resin. I've experimented in the past with various resins. This is my first time using polyester resin. As you can see, I pour about 16 ounces in there and put the appropriate amount of drops inside. I have it prepared, it's ready to go. And now on to the materials that I'm gonna make into pens. Here are the breadcrumbs, as you can see here. I've also got in those bags some sprinkles, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, and some coarse sugar. And at this point, I take the breadcrumbs and I go ahead and sift out all the really fine material. I pour the prepared resin into another cup, stir it up, and go ahead and start to pour it into these molds. All right, take your time here, pour this resin in there, go ahead and shake out any air bubbles. I do wanna say this, I'm gonna go ahead and do sprinkles and coarse sugar. The poppy seeds and the sesame seeds, I'm gonna save for another experiment for another time. Well, so far so good. Now, I don't really have a ratio I'm using to prepared resin to various product like, you know, one cup of this, two cups of that, I don't really know. So I'm just experimenting, going off the seat of my pants here and hopefully it turns out okay. All right, now it's time to prepare these blanks. In the past, well, I'm actually pleasantly surprised here because the blanks are coming right out of the PVC pipe. In the past, the other resins I've used have adhered themselves to the PVC to where I had to turn the PVC off on the lathe. This looks like it's gonna be a little bit better and I'm actually very happy with how this is turning out so far. All right, now to the crosscut sled to prepare these blanks even further. I'm using one of the brass collars. This one happens to be painted white as a reference mark to cut these blanks just a little oversized, and you'll see why just in a second. And so far, each of these materials is running just fine through the table saw. Now, on my way to the drill press, and I've got this little squeeze clamp here, a screw clamp that I've cut a little recess in to hold these blanks in place while I drill the hole. Again, I'm going very slow here. It doesn't look like it because of the sped up footage. However, take your time and everything will go just fine. As you can see here, these holes are actually pretty accurate right through the center of the piece. But here you get a better look at the coarse sugar. This is a subtle pin, if you will. The, the markings in this aren't gonna be so pronounced, but it's gonna be a cool little rock candy effect. At least I hope so. And the problem with the sprinkles that I thought was gonna be there is true. Each sprinkle is actually enrobed in color, not colored throughout, the inside is white. So it's not gonna be as colorful as I once had imagined, but anyway, we're gonna keep on moving and hopefully it turns out all right. Again, same rules apply here, go slow, take your time, and you won't get any chip out and hopefully you don't have any blowout at the bottom of the piece. Now that all the holes are drilled in the blanks, it's time to put the brass collars in place. I somehow did all of this outside the camera shot, so here's the example here. We're gonna go ahead and do this in a wood blank. We're gonna sand up the brass collar, give it some a little bit of traction, put the epoxy or the CA glue like I'm using, give it some activator, and that's it. And now that you see that the blanks are oversized, you can see the brass collar has to be flushed up with the surface of the blank. Now they make an attachment for your drill press that flushes this up with the collar and the material as well, but I just simply use the disc sander and take my time and everything works out just fine. 
All right, with these pieces prepped and they're about to go on the lathe, you gotta do one more step. You gotta take a seven millimeter reamer. These are seven millimeter diameter um, collars that are inside. And you can see there, they get kind of gunked up with all the sawdust or in this case, resin dust or whatever, or breadcrumb, <laughs> if you will. So you take the reamer, simply run it through, and now you're good to go. And now you can put this on the mandrel with no problem. Let's get that done. And also, it is such a beautiful day outside today. I'm gonna bring the lathe outside. Let's get to it. Actually, resin on the lathe makes an absolute mess. So bringing this outside, not just because it's a beautiful day, but because the cleanup is much easier as well. All right, now it's time to install the pin mandrel. You can see here there's multiple parts. There are these collars on it. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put one collar at the base, slide in one blank, separate it with another collar. I put a few more collars in there and then tighten down the screw to go ahead and give everything a nice compressed fit and we're good to go to start turning. Like I said before, I've tried this experiment multiple times and I decided to go ahead and film this one as I'm hoping it's gonna work. So I'm going through this process, taking my time, going ahead and whittle this thing down to a pin form and then onto some sanding. I'm gonna go from 150 all the way up to 600 grit. And what happens at this point as I'm sanding, I don't realize this, but too much friction is happening on the edges. And check this out. Yep, that's what happens. The epoxy separates itself because it gets too hot and it starts to become more flexible than it should be and I was so upset. But good thing I made two pin blanks and you see that there, we're gonna try again. Well, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna make mistakes and you just gotta keep moving. So I go ahead and I take my time. This probably took me 10 minutes to whittle this piece down to the size you're gonna see before I sand. And then after that, I remove the tool rest and go on to some sanding. Now this took me right around 15 minutes. Making sure not to stay in one spot for too long. Definitely don't wanna create the friction we did last time and success. Finally, I got a good result that I like. I will say this, it is not without imperfections. So I'm gonna go ahead and wax up the collars. More on that later. It's basically to, when I pull this off, it's gonna separate a lot easier because I'm coating each resin blank with CA glue right now. I go ahead and apply some CA glue with a towel and then go ahead and put some activator on it. And even after that, I notice there are some holes or some craters in there, so I'm filling those dustily with the CA glue as well. So far, so good. It looks like it's working pretty well. After this point, the blanks are very rough and I go ahead and sand them very lightly again. I know this seems like a long process to make this work, but I'm determined to make this work. So hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've bought in and you're gonna see something pretty cool at the end. At this point, I wanna thank all of my Patreon members. Guys, you guys are absolutely incredible. Wesley Robinson, Steve from Moonshine Metalworks, Robbie Chaplin, Richard at Fab42, and Earl Price. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support. If you'd like to support us on Patreon and you like what we do here, there'll be a link down below. Of course, no obligation, no pressure. I just wanna give a shout out to these guys and tell them thank you. All right, back to the project. Now, since this is a CA finish, I like to use micro mesh. Going from 1500 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit, this process, when used with water, gives you a nice finish on any piece, kind of almost the surface of glass, if you will. So a little CA glue is actually extending beyond the pieces here. I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off with some 400 grit sandpaper. Again, be careful, make sure you line this up just right, you'll have no problem. Now here is a pen kit that I'm gonna show you. The anatomy of how a pen is constructed when you turn one on the lathe. Essentially, you've got a tip, you've got the piece that you've carved, a collar, along with the other piece you've carved and a back part for putting it in a shirt pocket, if you will. And you go ahead and compress fit all these in here. You can see this is a pen press I made out of Baltic birch plywood. It has pieces that you can then add and remove depending on how long the piece is, depending on how much you need to compress it. And I use a squeeze clamp, as you can see there, to go ahead and push all these pieces in place making sure everything fits well, and there you go. There's your pin. All right, now on to turning the sprinkles. This is gonna be interesting. So again, like I said, it's really colorful now, but check this out. As I start to whittle away material, it turns essentially white. I'm not too happy about it, but we're gonna go ahead and continue on with this. And again, I gotta be careful, but I wasn't careful enough. I had the same exact problem with the sprinkles as I did the bread. It chipped out. I'm not really sure why. I took my time, but I'm gonna save the other piece on the left-hand side. Hopefully I can use this along with maybe one of the coarse sugar pieces I'm gonna make in a little bit. So as I apply the CA finish to this one as well, I realize more of the color is popping out than I expected. So I'm actually okay with this. Pretty happy how this is turning out. Micro mesh this as well, and then move on to the coarse sugar. 
So I gotta say this, the coarse sugar was definitely the most temperamental thing to turn on the lathe. It was chipping out like crazy. However, I did take a lot of time on this second piece that didn't chip out on me. And I put a CA glue finish as well on this. And I'm gonna use both the sprinkles and the coarse sugar to make one pin really because it's what I got. One piece was salvaged from both of those carvings and I think it's gonna turn out pretty well. And just like that, there you go. Two pins made out of materials that have meant a lot to me in my past and I think they turned out absolutely beautiful. They're a conversation piece and I'm so happy with how they turned out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate you being here. I'd like to take a moment to link a certain channel down below and that would be Peter Brown. He has done some amazing experiments with resin in the past and this was kind of a project that stemmed from the inspiration I got from his channel. Although I don't think this has been done before in terms of bread making it to a pin. So I have a favor for you guys. If you guys don't mind, if you think this is unique, if you think this is something that hasn't been done on the internet before, share this video. All right, I definitely appreciate that. Hit me up with a good thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna have some more videos over here as well. And also, you can subscribe to the channel right there. And if you wanna support what we do on Patreon, I'll have a link down below as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. She's saying bye. And we'll see you on the next project, right? All right, let's go. Mwah.